Hi everyone, at the hangar, just wanted to give you some updates on what's going on. I came down to the hangar to kind of size up how to put the engine parts on to, the, to, to mount the engine, basically. Um, some of the parts, I don't know the names of the part, and I don't know how to correctly pronounce them. But there are some parts that, well, I started to put together my engine mount. And I took a picture of what I had come up to because there was an issue that I was, I was questioning. So I texted Dennis Carley of Aerolite 103 Manufacturing. And luckily I got a response, especially on you know, Sunday. Everybody's watching their football games. I was listening to mine actually. Go Raiders, yay. Uh, they beat the Broncos. Um, so yeah, I came up against an issue where it need, I needed to have some more washers on uh, the mount system. So when I texted him, he texted me back and he told me that I was kind of pre, uh, pre uh, what's the word? I was jumping ahead, jumping ahead. What he had seen so far that I had done today, that he, so, he said basically I jumped ahead and he told me I have to remove everything that I put on today and I have to take these parts and I have to put them under the motor first and uh, put those on the motor and torque those down, all that jazz. Then I put these insulator things on these uh, solid metal, solid aluminum pieces that have a spot for these insulators. So once I get it, once I get these two pieces of aluminum attached to the bottom of the engine, then I put on two insulators each, and then I put it on top of the plane, and then I bolt it down to the to the plane motor mount. Then I can move on. But at this point. I can't do that. I'll show you. I'll pick you up real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, what I did was I started to put this thing together and then I took a picture of it because I ran into an issue underneath here where the, the space was a little bit too much. I don't think this washer is going to be enough. So I asked him if I could put a couple extra washers in here. That led him to seeing the whole situation, telling me I needed to remove these and put these metal aluminum pieces on the bottom of the motor first. So I'll show you that. So that's what he meant. So now I have to put these underneath on the studs and then those are, the, those are on. But Yeah, so at this point, I need to remove that other one, put it on the bottom of the motor. I'm all by myself, so I gotta kinda like use leverage and stuff to move the engine around and get it to do what I want. Cause it's about 85 pounds and I'm not as strong as I used to be. So moving it around is not too bad, but picking it up I shouldn't do cause I hurt my back a long time ago. And just picking up a water fountain to move it in my yard was, like a week's worth of pain. So I, I don't like to like take chances with my back anymore. Long story short, I got to get these things put on. Then I need to have another human, somebody physical to help me pump this engine up there and put it on the plane and then go from there. So at this point, one dilemma after another. So I hope this, by doing all this stuff, I hope it helps other Aerolite 103 owners that are putting their planes together. The story is, is my story, is I saw this, this plane advertised in Barnstormers, which is like trade a plane. Basically, it's an airplane uh, marketplace. And I saw this plane because I'd been for probably a year looking at Challengers, looking at Excaliburs, which are two-seater 
uh, LSA, I think, they're, they're considered recreational aircraft, so I would have to get a license for those. Uh, I saw the Aero Lights, which are Part 103. I've seen the um, Legal Eagles, which are Part 103. You don't need a license other than just to be healthy, have a driver's license, and you don't have to have any FAA authorization. I could just fly this thing. So I ended up buying this because I saw it in Barnstormers one day for one heck of a price. And all I'll say is I paid about half price for it. So you can take that wherever you want, you know, from the prices that they're going for now or the prices they're going for a year prior. But I'll tell you, this is a 2017 model, so uh, you can figure it out, I guess. I'm not going to tell you exactly because I don't think it's anybody's business. And every time I end up telling anybody what I paid for something, I can never, I, I can never ever get what, I can never make a profit. And it's worth the profit, especially after all the, the extra work one puts into something. But in any case, long story short, got a great deal on the plane and I got a great deal on the motor. So I, I basically, I pretty much got it for half price. Let's put it that way. Um, so the story goes is I had to go all the way down to Clovis, California, which is probably about an hour drive for me because I live in Modesto, California. I had to drive down to Clovis. This thing was together in a man's garage, the wings and everything. So basically it was the hottest day of the year. It was probably 110 degrees out in his garage when we were taking this thing apart. And we took it apart, put it in a U-Haul van and I U-hauled, vanned it all the way to Modesto, put it in my garage for about a month, and started looking for a place to put it, you know, as in airport, hangar, share, like I'm doing now. And luckily I belong to the Experimental Aircraft Association, so as an EAA member, I came to the airport for one meeting and ended up talking to some people and they said, hey, ask this guy, so I did, and here, here we are. I'm, I was able to get a, a hangar. So that's the story with my Aerolite. So I got my Aerolite, never been a pilot, never uh, had an airplane before. This is my absolute first airplane. Um, my piloting experience is limited to maybe going for rides and actually piloting the plane when the pilot gives me the opportunity. But I am not a licensed pilot and I've not really taken any schooling or done any student training. Um, I, I attempted to go to ground school at one point, but that fizzled out and something came up and I couldn't, I couldn't attend it. Hopefully I can do that in the future. I know a man that's uh, an instructor for these ultralights in Lodi, and he teaches the Quicksilver MX. So it's very similar to this airplane. So when I finally get this thing ready to go and it's running and broken in and I can actually take it down the runway and lift it off, I'll, be, I'll probably be taking lessons at the same time with this man in Lodi. And once he gives me the okay and kicks me, kicks me up solo, then I can actually jump in mine and take it off and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be the better off for it, especially getting that extra training. So long story short, before I, I get long-winded, uh, which is <laughs> often, um, that's pretty much the story with my Aerolite. I call it Bluebird because it's black and blue. And as everybody knows, it's pretty much a bluebird color. Uh, the, the blue with the blacks mi mixed in in grays. So it looks like a bluebird to me and that's why they call it bluebird. So yeah, everybody names their planes. You know, some people name them Doris and, you know, Mabel and, you know, Maria. I, got, I have a wife, I could name it Maria, but I didn't want to name it a, a person's name. I wanted to just name it a bluebird. So, so that's it. So I'm going to let you go for now. I'm going to cut off for now, and I'll go home and maybe edit this and or just upload it and just put it on YouTube real quick so that at least this way you guys can know. The reason that I started my YouTube channel for Aerolite 103 construction is because I was kind of pushed into this by my own um, volunteerism, basically just going, yeah, you know what, this is the bucket list thing, and I'm going for it. So here I am, 61 years old, never flown before, not my own personal plane, but I'm going to do it. And before I die, I will be a pilot. So um, hopefully all of the stuff that I'm going through will help others that are building their Aerolite 103s 
Maybe you guys see stuff that I'm doing wrong. Leave it in the comments below. Um, I'm open for any expertise. And luckily I have the ear of the, the manufacturer, Dennis Carley, thank you. I really appreciate all that you're doing and helping me with. And I'm like a two year old with all the questions, but you're, the, you're a great guy. I really appreciate all the time you take with uh, spending with me uh, answering my stupid questions, which don't end up being stupid. They're actually education. So thanks, Dennis. That's it for now. I'm going to let you all go, and I'll cut back in when I have some more to report. Talk to you soon.